Don't be taking notion Hey, you wanna go Build you a cabin In Idaho In Idaho We'll be living free Don't sell no shotgun To deputy Don't shoot me down Don't shoot me down Don't shoot me down Don't shoot me down I got a wife and kids on the so in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to set up a very basic diamond tarp shelter. Uh, something that's nice and low profile, so it's hard to spot, uh, and does a good job protecting you from the elements. So that way you don't get killed in the woods. However, before we get into all that, you might notice that I'm wearing a Firearms Policy Coalition hoodie. And uh, those of you who follow us on Instagram or check our community tab regularly, We'll know how we feel about the Second Amendment. We believe that the Second Amendment is absolute and everyone short of like pedophiles has the right to keep and bear whatever arms they see fit, whether it's a machine gun, a long sword, or an RPG. We believe the Second Amendment is absolute and you have rights that are uh, not up for debate. So for those of you who agree with us, if you've got any spare money lying around, uh, we'd really appreciate it if you donate to Firearms Policy Coalition or you know, Gun Owners of America, or any of the other groups that go and actually file lawsuits against the government for infringing upon people's rights. So before you even set your shelter up, the first thing you're gonna need to do is find a good spot. Now, what constitutes a good spot? Well, we can go really in depth on this topic, but I just wanna give you some basics. So one, make sure there's no widow makers in the area. That means uh, a tree that's like dying and tilted over at a super sketch angle, uh, something about to fall down. Just just make sure that a tree is not going to fall down on top of you and kill you because uh, you want to get killed by the ATF. You don't want to get killed by the woods. The second thing you want to keep in mind is concealment. Generally, uh, if you look around the area I'm building in, there's tons of foliage, fallen down trees, a lot of shrubbery, things that can conceal a low hanging shelter. Lastly, you're going to want to stay a decent ways away from a water source, unlike where I am right now. Uh, and that's because water sources are going to attract people. So if you want to take a quick look at the area I'm building in, you can see this entire back portion is all covered by foliage. And uh, I have broken a rule here. There's a water source right down there. Now for camping, this is not a big deal, but obviously if you're trying to conceal yourself, uh, don't go to a spot where other people are gonna go. So around my area here, you can see there's some snow on the ground and there's uh, quite a few branches fallen. What you're going to want to do is clear out the area that your tarp is going to go over, but you don't want to just completely discard these branches or anything. Um, ideally, you're going to want to save them and you're just going to want to place them back over the area after you leave to try and conceal the fact that you were ever there in the first place. But so starting out, I'm just going to clear out some of the snow. You could use an e-tool or whatever, but I'm just going to use my feet because the snow is super light around this area. Let me tell you a story not long ago High on a mountain in Idaho In Idaho I was living free Some sort of shotgun to deputy Right, so now that we've got our area decently cleared out, we're going to go ahead and get our tarp out. This one is an AquaQuest guide, I think. It's a 10 by 10 tarp. You really want a tarp that fits in one of these stuff sacks because you can get this really big 10 by 10 tarp into this little tiny thing that's only slightly bigger than an Nalgene. It's a pretty awesome tarp. Uh, the fabric's all rip stop, so you can very easily patch and repair it. And uh, that's generally what you want, I think. Uh, something that's lightweight, uh, something that's lightweight and compact, but easily field repairable. You know, if you're going to set up a permanent camp, a real heavy duty tarp is a, is a good idea, but for Something like what we're doing, where we're going to be on the move a lot, setting up camp in a bunch of different locations. Uh, I would say going lightweight but field repairable is, uh, is the way to go. So we're going to take the center of our tarp and we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring it to the tree we want to tie it off to. So uh, this one's a little bit, eh, I'll, I'll go for this one. So we're going to get our lines out. This can be 550 cord, it can be really anything. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, wrap it around the tree. Cunt. Then we're gonna bring our line 
the part connected to the roll. Obviously you can do pre-cut lengths, but I haven't bothered to do that for this video. So we're gonna bring our spool over to the middle point and give it a little bit of extra length just to be generous. And uh, for me, I forgot to bring my knife, so I'm gonna have to chop it with my ax. My chipped and dull ax. There we go. Right, let me find my uh, thing. Right, so here you can see I have the tie down point in the middle of the front of my tarp. I'm gonna go and throw my line through it. I'm just gonna tie a knot there. You could do a bunch of different types of knots. I am by no means a knot master, so I'm just gonna do a basic whatever that's called, and uh, it'll hold okay. So this next section is about tying your tarp off to the tree. Be aware, I am by no means a knot guru, so you're gonna have to bear with me a little bit. Um, but I can tell you how to uh, position the height. Generally, you're going to want the height to be lower than all surrounding foliage. So you're gonna take your free end, you're going to bring it over the end connected to your tarp. You're gonna loop it once, and then you're gonna loop it a second time, right? You're gonna wanna kind of scrunch these together. So now you've created this point where the knot can slide. Then you have to take it and do one more loop over top where they, uh, they meet behind this, this initial kind of knot. So loop it over once. And now if you look here, there'll be this kind of little triangle shape and you're going to kind of create, you know, like the bunny ears, like you're tying your shoelaces and you're gonna pass it through the side that your thumb is through. And then you just gotta tighten it all down. Give it a good pull. Right. Now you can tighten it or Go ahead and pull this like quick release end and loosen it. So we're gonna get that nice and tight up against the tree. Really gotta force it. All right, so now our first guy line is nice and tight around the tree. Okay, so now that we've got our tarp tied off to the tree, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start kind of pulling it apart. And I'm gonna do things kind of the expedient way. You can go ahead and tie guidelines to all the corners and like your tie down points and then make it more adjustable. This is just, you're trying to get a shelter set up real quick and not get killed in the woods. So we're gonna go ahead and get our tent stakes out. We're going to find our rearmost uh, tether point and we're gonna pull all the slack out of it. You should see a nice straight line going across the middle. We're gonna go and push our tent stake through our tie down point. Now, you obviously don't want the ridge line so tight that you know, you're gonna tear your tarp, but uh, you know, it should be nice and, nice and tight. Then we're just gonna shove that down into the ground. So when you push these into the ground, you're gonna wanna go in on an angle and you're gonna to wanna to go in on this angle. That way there's dirt kind of blocking this back area. So when it tries to lift up, it's gonna to have to displace all this dirt. If you put it in straight, it has to displace less dirt and it's more likely to come out. And uh, if you place it in this way, obviously it's just gonna pull straight out. So now we'll go ahead and pull the rest of our stuff tight and put our tent pegs in. Got our corner here, pull a corner tight. We'll go over to this corner right here. We'll pull that tight too. A 
Again, all of your ridge lines should be nice and tight, but you shouldn't be worried about ripping your tarp. Now, if you look here, you can see I've got extra tie down points. Uh, generally, I'll also do this middle one, but these extra two are typically not necessary. If you're gonna get yourself into a really bad storm, uh, you know, use, go ahead and use all your tie down points, but uh, it's generally not super necessary. Now we're gonna go ahead and repeat the process on the opposite side. Uh, this fucking thing. Go ahead, we have our last tent stake. Again, oh, it's gonna go up my asshole. I gotta move some of this. Go ahead and pull that nice and tight. I could get a little tighter than that. Right, so doing a quick walk around, you can see I'm lucky enough to have this second tree really close and that's gonna block some wind from getting in this front position. And I can put my backpack over here to block even more wind. So yeah, standing behind these fallen trees and branches, uh, you can clearly see why I mentioned building the tarp low. Uh, building it low really helps conceal it. Now for normal camping, I would probably want a little bit more height than this, uh, but for the purposes of concealment, yeah, keep things low to the ground. Uh, you want it ideally, you know, at or below waist level. Um, really just do your best to keep things out of sight. Now for this type of shelter, there's one thing you're gonna need to keep in mind. Uh, if you're in an environment like this where the ground is gonna be wet, uh, you're gonna need a bivy sack in your sleep system. So you can see here, I've just got this uh, surplus UCP bivy sack. You can get these probably under 60 bucks. Um, so you're gonna need that, your sleeping pad. Obviously you can use like one of the Z-Lite soles, the foam ones, but personally I like the uh, blow up ones. They're a little bit more comfortable. Uh, they don't really add any weight and they pack down a lot smaller. So we're gonna bring these out and uh, start blowing up our air mattress here. They shot my boy, my only son, my pride and joy. So now that I'm inside my shelter, I'm gonna go ahead and unroll my bivy sack. To keep items like this nice and uh, rolled up, I like to get some bungee cord and just put the little toggles on them. These are great multi-use items, and I would recommend that everyone keep them on them. Well, it seems like I'm retarded because I put my bivy in here upside down. There we go. All right, here we go. Now we're just going to unzip our bivy. And the next step is gonna be placing our sleep system inside. We really want to try and keep our sleep system off the wet ground as much as possible because we don't want to get wet and then freeze to death and die. So yeah, now if I'm worried about wind, I can go ahead and lift up my backpack, go and prop it up against this tree. Cunt. There we go. And that'll block a little bit more of the wind from uh, going and blasting me and making me freeze to death. Now, if you wanna be really hardcore and you really wanna save a lot of weight and space, um, you don't necessarily have to pack a sleeping bag. You can just go ahead and bring a bivy sack and uh, I really would recommend bringing a sleeping pad because uh, your, uh, your effectiveness when you wake up after having a, a stick lodged in your lower back for, you know, six hours of sleep, it's not going to be great. 
really, I, I strongly recommend bringing a sleeping pad. But you could bring your sleeping pad and your bivy sack and then just sleep in your normal insulation layers. Personally, it's not something I do because it's not taking up space that I was otherwise going to use for anything else. Ugh. So one quick thing I didn't mention, uh, you could go ahead and make like a ridge pole to uh, give yourself some extra stability if it starts raining super hard or, you know, just the elements are fucking you. Uh, but, you know, it was uh, some light snow out today, so I didn't think it was really necessary. And uh, it kind of takes away from the idea of this being as expedient and quick a shelter to set up as possible. They left my wife in our So yeah, that's our video on setting up a quick and expedient uh, tarp shelter. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I'm looking to do more of this type of content uh, as time goes on. Thank you.